We turn now to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Speaking about these men, Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, whom he's referred to in the previous verses, he says, all these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Now there are some things very instructive that we can learn from this passage, because certainly concerning all these men whom he has just spoken of, Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, there was a difference between them and the rest of the world in which they lived. Abel, for example, was different from Cain. We don't know about any of the other people in the world at that time, but certainly what we are told concerning Abel and Cain, there was a distinct difference between Abel and Cain. His heart was not like Cain's heart. He had a broken and a contrite heart unlike Cain. So God accepted him. And in that sense, he was different. He had a heart for God. He had a heart of faith, of trust in God, that separated him from the worldliness that there was in his brother Cain. The same thing concerning Enoch. Enoch lived at a time when there was a lot of ungodliness in the world, and it says he walked with God in the midst of this ungodly world. We're told in Jude that he preached against this world. And so he must have been a lonely man too, just like Abel. Lonely because he was following God. He was in the minority. Abel too was in the minority. When Cain was rejected by God, Cain could go out and marry and settle down. There were other people who went that way. But Abel was in the minority. The same with Enoch. He was in the minority. We do not know if there was anyone else in the world in Enoch's time. But he was a lonely man, walking with God in the midst of an ungodly world. And his life was a living testimony to the fact that he had nothing to do with the ungodliness of this world. And he walked in this world as a stranger and a pilgrim, one who didn't belong to this world. The same thing with Noah. He and his family stood apart from the rest of the world as different because of their godliness and their righteousness and their faith in God. And thus he too was, as it were, separate, as a fish out of water in a sense, as one who is in a strange country, one whose aims and motives and ambitions are totally different from the world around. The same thing with Abraham. Ur of the Chaldees was a highly developed place in Mesopotamia, and obviously Abraham could have had a very comfortable life there as all his other relatives were having. But he came out from that at the call of God and he forsook many of the advantages of Ur of the Chaldees to go out as it were into a desert as a pilgrim and a stranger live in tents instead of the permanent house he had in the Ur of the Chaldees. And so there again you find faith brings a separation for Abel it brought a separation from Cain, for Enoch it brought a separation from the rest of the world, for Noah and his family it brought a separation from the rest of the world, and for Abraham it brought a separation from his relatives. And even though he took his father and his nephew Lot with him, God couldn't really lead him on to the fullness of his purpose until his father had died and his nephew Lot had been separated from him. And so there's a lesson we learn here that separation is necessary for faith. Just like we saw last week that impotence, verse 12, to come to the end of ourselves, having no ability in ourselves, is necessary for faith. In the same way we see here that separation is also necessary for faith. Being separate from the rest 
of the world, being separate not in the way we dress, but in our aims and ambitions, in our attitudes, in our attitude to material things, for example, in our attitude to money and pleasure and the honor of this world, many things like that. We'll see that more concerning some of the other men described in Hebrews chapter 11, that they stood out as distinct, and this should characterize all who are children of God even today. If our aims and ambitions and our way of life is exactly the same as the world around us, then really there is no difference. And we cannot say that we are walking by faith. We may have certain doctrines that we believe in our head, but the very thing that Hebrews chapter 11 points out is that faith is more than believing certain doctrines. Abraham didn't just believe certain doctrines and live in Ur of the Chaldees. Noah didn't just believe certain doctrines and live like the rest of the world. Enoch did not believe certain doctrines and walk like the rest of the world. No, there was a difference between them and the rest of the world that came as a result of their faith. And dear friends, this is what we need to see, that faith is not merely an intellectual belief in certain doctrines. Those doctrines that are precious to us from Scripture are important, and we would not devalue their importance. But we would say what James says, that if it's merely belief in doctrines that we have, then the devil has the same type of faith as we have. That's not faith. Faith produces works. And that is the clear, ringing testimony of Hebrews chapter 11. It brought a separation from the rest of the world in their way of life, in their attitude to things, and they made it very clear, it says in verse 14, that they sought a country, and that country was not in this world. They were not seeking a country in this world. They were not seeking possessions and honor and fame and pleasure here in this world. But they desired a better country, as it says in verse 10, a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And because they desire, verse 16, a heavenly country, because they were separated from the world, because they were strangers and pilgrims, because they came out from the world and didn't want to have anything to do with the uncleanness and um, the filthiness that there was in the world around them, it says here that God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. For whom has he prepared this city? For those who desire it, for those whose heart is set on the city above, those whose heart is set in heaven, those whose mind is set on the things that are above, those who are not seeking anything in this earth, it is for them that God has prepared a city. It's not for any odd person who calls himself a believer, who's living for this world. Think of a man who loves money, whose mind is preoccupied with how he can make more and more money. Obviously, his home is in this world. No matter how much he may say he's a believer, no matter what he may say he is, he may be a full-time worker, he may be one who is very zealous in Christian activity, but his heart and mind are in this world. He's preoccupied with material things. God hasn't prepared a city for such a man, certainly not. It says here, God has prepared a city for them, for those who desire a better country for those who have lived as strangers and exiles on the earth, verse 13. And concerning them it is written, God is not ashamed to be called their God. This is in line with what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14 to 18 where it says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers and come out from their midst, verse 17, and do not touch what is unclean and then I will welcome you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. See, that promise is not for anyone and everyone. It's for those who obey the exhortation to come out and be separate from the attitudes and the way of thinking of the world around them. And when they separate themselves from the world in their attitude and their thinking and come out from all that's unclean, then God says, I will be a father to you. And this is the mark of the true man of faith.